Hello everyone and welcome to a tutorial on how to use So What Pro. My name is Alexis. I am owner of So Sweet Monogramming and also So Sweet Academy. I've been having a lot of questions about how to pull up designs and edit on So What Pro. So here is a great and fast tutorial on how to pull up your design, merge them in, and a couple of other little tricks that I have for you, all right? So first, let's start with file. And I have a memory stick that is two gigs that I save most of my files on. So I'm gonna go to file and then open. I already have my memory stick loaded in. Then once I go to open, I will find the drive that it's saved to, which is my F drive. And as you can see, I have everything kind of just in different folders. And then these are just some that I'd, I'd need to either file away or I made different edits to, and I just, I never deleted them. All right, what do we want to bring in? Let's do a baby design. So I went to open, I went to file, open, and then I'm gonna go to the baby folder. And I have a lot of options here. Maybe not baby. What was my other fun one? Girl. Girl was a fun one. And as you can see, I have all these here. So you can go and sometimes what I like to do is just select the first one. And then just, I use my down arrow to scroll down. Okay. So this looks like a pretty fun one. Let's do it on the, I wonder if I have this one on the five by seven. I like using my mouse because when I use my mouse, I can use the little roller ball to scroll up and down. I thought maybe I had this one in a, there we go. So I wanna do the five inch one and I'm gonna use the split one because I wanna show you how to merge in a name in there also. So I'm gonna select it and then hit open, or you can double click it. And it's gonna automatically bring it in on the hoop size that you need. So this one brought it in on a five by seven hoop. If you are actually using a machine that only takes a four by four, you would choose the four by four, but let me show you what you can do. You can go to hoop properties and this one allows you to change your hoop size okay so let's say this one was going in a different direction you would change it you could do the seven by five and then that will give it to you horizontally now uh, i honestly it will fit in here but i think it fits more comfortably in the five by seven but like i was saying about the four by four this is the brother if you most of us use brother so if you're using the brother or you can, you know, if you're on a Bernina machine, they have all of the different hoop sizes, Janome. So let's go back to brother. And there's a cap one, all of the above. We'll do those on another tutorial. I'm going to go back to the five by seven. That one actually says baby lock, but it's the same. All right. And if you are not using a mouse, you can go over to the bottom where it says plus and minus, and that's how you can zoom in and zoom out. But I personally prefer to use a mouse, so that way I can use my little rollerball to zoom in, and then I use my um, bar over here on the side to scroll up and down. Now we have your design in there. And if you look over here, you see each color that is loaded in. You can highlight each color, go to the next one, the next one, and that just shows you which colors you have, all right? If you want to change any of this, let's say you want your mermaid starfish to be purple instead of pink. You're gonna go select it. I usually select right here on the color with a number. You select that and then go down. You can bring that up some if you need more room. 
go down and find purple. That, that says purple, but I like the violet purple better. All right, and that automatically changes it for you. Let me show you another little trick here. This is the thread palette. It's the Brother Poly thread palette. You can go on here and find, like, let's say you're using Exquisite Thread, you're using Clarkson Coats. You can choose those, and it gives you the exact thread number, and it gives you a whole new color palette that that thread brand offers. Okay, so you can use different, you can use different palettes. I think it defaults. I don't, know, I don't know which one it was on, but I think it defaults to a specific one. But I actually like this this Clarkson Coats um, palette. It gives me some colors that I hadn't used before, so let's let's keep it on there. But you can change it to eat, to any one that you want. But keep in mind when you go to stitch it out, that's when the colors really matter. This is just a visual for you. When you load your colors on your machine, that's what color you're going to have. So I don't care if you have a purple here, if you load a blue for that number four stitch, you'll have a blue star. All right. Now, this comes already centered once you load it, and you can tell by your grid marks. That matches up with the zero. This matches up with that. Where's the bottom of it? That should be zero. So that's your zero by zero axis. You can move it by clicking on it and dragging it up or you can use your up and down arrows to move it up, down, left, and right. Okay, I usually get it into the area that I want it in, and then I'll move it around. Now for this example, since we can put the name right in this space, I wanna keep it centered. Once I move it and I wanna find my center really easily, I go to center pattern and hoop, or you can hit, you can hit Alt plus C and that automatically centers it for you. Now let's bring in a name. You're gonna merge, don't open, because if you open, it'll have a whole new tab right here. This is the updated version of it. I noticed it updated about a week ago. Um, I'm still getting used to this new one. There's a couple of new things like these tabs weren't there, but I do think I like this one. So to merge in, you can go File Merge or Control M if you know your fast keys. Like I said, I have everything organized in folders. You guys should be proud of me because I don't typically organize. But in order to um, keep up with everything, it is so much easier to organize in here. All right, so a cute font that I have, let's see. Let's do Jamberry. I think Jamberry will be small enough. So I have Jamberry in its folder. And then once you go into that folder, I have the folders once again organized by the size. So let's go into the two inch. And you can go from here and select whichever one. I'm going to put my name inside the mermaid. So I will start with the first A, and then you hit open, and that brings it in. You know what? For this one, I may have to use a smaller one because two inches is going to be too big. Back to the drawing board. And it's okay to look at it and see. We could size that down, but some fonts I don't like to size down too small because it will mess up the stitch um, of your color, I mean, of your file. I wanted a cute one. I know some of my cute ones are, let's see, school book is a, it's kind of a blocky one. Let's go to Buckingham. I think Buckingham may have some cursive and maybe a half an inch. Oh, I said I was going to do my name. I was about to do my daughter's name. I'm so used to putting her name on everything. And then when you want to take something out, you just select it and hit delete. 
Now that A uh, is a little small. Maybe we can go up. Y'all want to try? Let's see what we get with an inch. All right, so I like the inch better. So you can move this out of the way or you can delete it. Sometimes I just move it until I'm ready for it. Now that is a little bigger than I would prefer, but I'm going to show you how to size it down. I only use minor um, edits when it comes to sizing down because like I said, you don't want to go down too far. Now once you've selected one from there, you can go to resize. No, sorry, not resize. You can go to, there's an icons button on here. There we go. There we go. Icons. And that will bring up a lot of the files that you have already used recently. So you see this one? These are all my ones that I have on there, not really filed away inside the, the girl folder that I have. And I'm just scrolling down. It's taking a little longer than I prefer. My computer has a couple things running right now, but here we go. I scrolled down until I found Buckingham one inch. And right underneath it, if I am correct, you should have Buckingham half an inch. Yep, there we go. So if we were under that first one, there, there would be what we were doing. All right, so we're going to spell out my name. A, and so this is easier than going file, merge, file, merge each one. You come over here to the side, you go to the next one, A, L, E, X, I, S. That's my name, right? I spelled it right? Yeah. Now, what I want to do is highlight just my name. Let's go ahead and delete this. I'm okay with not using that one. Sometimes I leave it just in case I change my mind, but I'm pretty confident with this one right now. So you want to highlight this without getting all of this, right? Because this is too far over and I want to edit the name just a little bit. So you go and hit the control button instead of taking each, um, each alphabet individually, because you could do this. You could take one over at a time, but that takes so much longer. So I'm gonna go control, select, select, select. I'm clicking on each letter individually, and now I have all of them selected without the mermaid. Then I'm gonna move it over here, only because I wanna be able to work with it and close in these little gaps right here. See those little gaps? I want it to look cursive. So I usually start with the last one and I select it and then do an arrow on my keyboard to pull it over. Then I highlight the next one, pull it over. I look at it, let's see, maybe I can bring it over one more. I like that. Some of them are a little tricky. You see I brought that over but it still didn't match up. So I'm gonna highlight it again and let's bring it down just so that it can match up with that one. Boom, it worked. All right, bring the E over. Now, just looking at this, not even on an axis line, I think I wanna bring my A down just a little bit. There we go. So I like that. And sometimes I even also take it and put it on a line somewhere just to see if it's lined up. And I am satisfied with that. So we're gonna highlight it all again. And the reason we can highlight it all again like this is because it's not inside of the mermaid and we can highlight it without touching all of that. So I just highlight it without using the control buttons. So highlight and bring it down into the mermaid. You can use your little axis lines to make sure you're centered. If you can do it well enough with your mouse, that's great. If not, use your regular arrows to just bring it 
where you want. Okay. And sometimes you can even, if you have that one selected, you can even go to your center pattern in hoop or control alt. But it will it will always center the one that you have selected. If not, it'll center the whole thing if nothing is selected. Now remember we wanted to make the name fit inside that line. Now I'm gonna show you another way to select each letter. You go to icons once again now i did that because i wanted to show you if you hit icons twice it takes you one of them takes you to your files and the other ones will take you to your letters okay now i want to select my name i'm going to hit control and then starting with number five that's the number five stitch um, stitch area or thread change, you're gonna hold the control button down and select. Sometimes you have to scroll your mouse down just to get all that on the screen. Keep the control button, select six, select, select. I usually let up if I'm scrolling down with my mouse, I let up off the control scroll and then select again select again and you have your whole name or whatever file you were working with you have that selected then i want to resize it just a little bit just a little bit i'm not going to go very very small i wouldn't i wouldn't size this up very big either because i don't want to compromise the stitch i went to you know let me start that one again i went to resize or you can go to control r and I mainly want to do the height, but if you wanna do both of them at one time, you can go to lock aspect ratio and watch this. I can move this down to two inches. No, nope, let's just, let's do it one inch. I can move that down to one inch. Now watch the width at the same time. It's gonna keep the ratio. Come back down here, where'd you go? It's gonna keep the ratio. I'm gonna select one. Did you see that move? The number up here changed. This isn't going to move until we hit OK. And it went down just a little bit. OK, so I want to size it down just a little bit. That was only like a, a point, a very small amount that it went down. So let's go down to point seven five. All right, so that brings it really, really, really small where it will fit inside there. And I think I want it, let's go a little bigger. Go bigger. I'm gonna select all of them over here again. Control, 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 select all that. And then all the way up to number five. This time I am not going to lock the ratio because I want just, I want to spread it out some. So I want to just change the width and leave the height there. So let's do, let's get it back up to two and see what we get. So that spreads it out a little more. And you can also change individual letters. So I probably would bring that down to 0 0.72. Let's see what that does. There we go. So I did that because I wanted to get it off of the line. And I got it off a little bit. Maybe we bring her up a little bit and then center it. There we go. So I like it. It's only touching. If it had to touch a line, I would much rather it touch that little bottom line, just barely. Now, once we're done and I am okay with my name in there, I'm okay with 
the size of my overall project. I can look over here. I can see that the size, you want to highlight it so that way you know how big the whole thing is. The size is going to be 4.2, I mean 4.42 width by 5.01 height. And then you have your stitch count here. And these are all of the colors that you're going to use. I want to merge my colors, combine these colors right here, because once I save it on my memory stick and convert it over to my machine, these, if you don't combine these, these will all be a thread stop. So once it stitches the number five, it'll stop. So watch this. Let's go ahead and you can either highlight them or go to edit and join threads. So I want to join all threads of the same color. Um, starting with number five, let's do it that way. Because if we join all of the ones at the same color, or, okay, let me show you. So adjacent threads of the same color, that means you would have all of these in a row, they're the same color that would join all those. Or, join all threads of the same color that would join number one and number three and i don't want to do that because it's important of the order that it's in for the overlapping so if you change this one and that one to match you won't get that good overlapping it would it would it would change the stitch order so let's say join threads of the same color starting with number five so once we hit okay watch what these down here are going to do See that? They all, now number five is all the same one. Now keep in mind, once you join them all of the same color, you can't go back and edit the name. You can't move the A, the L, the E, X, I, S. You can't separate them from each other unless you go to the back button, okay? And let's say you've gotten a little further into your project and you realize you want to move these over, move your letters over a little bit, you would either have to go back all the way or split threads. And that's, that's not um, as easy as going through and putting it how you want to do it and then doing it all at the end. I typically wait until I'm about to save my project to join my thread colors and put them in the correct order that I want them in. Okay? Now, in order to save your project, you're going to go to File, Save As, and if you're going to stitch it right away, I usually have my computer. I have a I have a um, Brother PE 780 and a PE 800 and a PR 655. So depending on which one I'm going to stitch on is depending on how I save it. If I'm going to do my multi needle, which is the PR655, I go ahead and I have my machine plugged in already and it gives me another drive. Um, usually I can select mine as my I drive and I'll save it to the computer um, that is plugged into my machine and then it automatically goes over. But if you are saving it to your memory stick to take over to your single needle or even your multi needle, but if you're saving it to your memory stick, I personally would save it outside of the folder and name it something else, Alexis Mermaid. And then this way, it will be out of the folder, but it'll be in one of these random ones down here. That's how I got all these random ones. I saved them outside of the folder so that when I go to my, to my computer, I just go through and, and pick them out that way. Hit save, and there we go, it's saved. Actually, I wish I had changed that color beforehand. Let's see, what color did we pick? Was that violet? That's cute, or maybe pink. I like that better. Um, and we made a change, so we got to go back and save it. Save as. This time it'll be a little easier because we already have it named. It's already going to be in the F drive outside of these folders. So you just hit save. You want to replace it? Yes, I do. 
and then you can remove your memory stick and go into your machine to stitch. You'll stitch it out and hopefully you have a beautiful design. All right. Thanks for watching everyone and I hope this helps you. I will do a more detailed one, but this one was just to pull in and merge a design and save it so that you can stitch it. Oh, before we go, remember, look, we did we did those two. Those are different. So I'm going to, do you want to leave those? We can, we can combine those because it will stitch the star and then it'll go right to my name. So let's combine those. Join adjacent threads of the same color. So that time I joined adjacent threads rather than doing the one that started at um, five. So that has cut down on our thread changes. Okay, I hope that wasn't confusing at all, but that is the how to merge a file into So What Pro and how to do minor edits, all right? Well, thanks you guys, thanks for watching. Make sure you subscribe, hit like if you're watching this on YouTube and hit the little bell button so that you can get my notifications on any other embroidery tips and tricks that I do. Sometimes I do them live on my actual machine. This one was just a tutorial on So What Pro. All right, I will see you all later. Bye.